Hello everybody and welcome back to this new episode. Today we'll be looking at this boot here. This is the Tetbury boot by Crockett and Jones and this specific boot is a dark brown wax calf and um, this boot also comes in black and it comes in a dark suede. It comes in brown suede and also a black suede. Um, it retails for £430, this, uh, this uh, waxed calf model and um, it's Come, become quite a popular model in recent years and I think that's also due to its um, feature in the 2012 James Bond film Skyfall. Um, it was featured in the opening scene in Istanbul and also in the Shanghai scene uh, where James Bond wore this boot. He wore it in black. This is a, the dark brown colour but uh, other than that it's exactly this model. It comes on the 348 last which is also a popular, popular last and features this really nice chiseled toe here and um, not square but sort of yeah it's a chiseled chiseled last that really is very elegant uh, timeless and um, at the same time it's quite modern so it's not a you know a very classic last um, but at the same time really timeless so um, I would like to share with you my experiences with it so uh, maybe if you're thinking of buying the shoe you'd know what to look out for maybe some pros some cons things that I may have done wrong um, with this shoe and yeah just generally my impressions of it. This shoe is five years old. I bought this shoe pretty much exactly five years ago and I wear it quite often because it's very very versatile. That's the biggest pro I think of this uh, shoe. I can wear it with a suit. I generally wear it, wear it to work um, on rainy days uh, especially because of the day-night rubber sole which you can see here. It's um, very durable. Also, the leather itself is quite a rugged leather compared to some of the other uh, calfskin shoes. This is uh, it has these these oils that have been that were introduced to it during the tanning process, um, which makes it slightly more resistant to uh, to varying weather conditions. Um, it also wears really well with jeans or chinos. So um, I've worn this shoe also when I say I'd go out to a very nice restaurant. I could wear this with a sort of a, a casual outfit to um, just to dress that outfit up. But like I said, it, it really goes with, with many, many different outfits, which is why I really love the shoe and it gets a lot of time on my feet. Um, having said that, or like I said, I also wear this shoe whenever I know it's going to rain when I when I have to go to work and I don't want to wear a shoe which has a leather sole, um, I'll go for this one. Now, it hasn't happened a lot, but occasionally this shoe has been caught in very bad weather and it's been soaked. And over the years, of course, it doesn't really matter what kind of leather you have, any kind of leather, if it gets soaked, it's not a good sign. And um, you can see here some of the, the creasing uh, which has become quite dominant over the past years. And I think I may have done, um, I, I may have made a mistake while trying to uh, freshen the boot up a bit, which I'll share with you in a second. First of all, I'll just like to show you the boot from different angles. So you get an idea. This is what it looks like after five years. Right. Okay, Goodyear welted, of course. Like I said, the construction is really, really good, and I love the, the material itself. It's very, very soft. This is a 9.5E. I'm a 9.5 foot. Um, I have a fairly wide foot. Um, and ease can, the, the standard width E can sometimes be a bit tight. Um, this shoe was slightly... It was a little bit too tight when it was brand new, if I remember rightly, but it did break in quite quickly and it's very, very comfortable now. I mean, I can walk in this shoe for hours and um, really feel, you know, my feet won't hurt. It's a very comfortable shoe due to the softer leather. Um, that's also, I think, quite an interesting or a, a, quite a, a valuable piece of information. If you do have a, a wide foot, then, um, you know, this is this is definitely worth worth a try because the leather does adapt very well to your to your feet. Okay, now as you can see here, as I just mentioned, this shoe, this boot does have um, a bit of creasing in it, which is more than say on, on, on other shoes and, and boots that I own, and it could be due to the leather. Now, possibly I, I sort of mixed up, uh, I, I messed up when I was when I was um, uh, caring for the shoe, 
and I'll tell you how it happened. Well, first of all, it got wet over the last couple of years quite a bit, and whenever that happens, um, you know, the, shoot, the leather dries out slightly more. And something that I would introduce was this Sapphire product, um, the Renovator, or the Renovateur, I think it's pronounced. Um, it doesn't really work well on this shoe, I have to say. For some reason, it won't really um, absorb into the, the, the leather. It dries out really quickly again, especially now after, you know, it, it wasn't as bad in the beginning, but now it's, it's really not the best product to use on this shoe, if, uh, in my opinion. Um, I'll usually go for this product here, which is a leather fat or a leather grease. Um, it's more rugged for more rugged leather, but I find that this just works better with, with this leather. Um, and it, uh, it really does give it, it, it gives it sort of a, a nice shine to it, but it also conditions the leather a lot better and makes it more moist. And the fat will absorb into the leather. I usually leave it out, out, out for, say, a day or two. Um, but to me, this works a lot better than the, the standard uh, renovator by, by Safia. Now, another mistake I think I did was to use this, the Renomat, or Renomat, or however you want to pronounce it. Um, very good product on my standard calfskin shoes. I really like, love this product, but on this shoe, I think it really stripped out some of the the oils and the, the, yeah, the oils that were introduced during the tanning process that makes this wax calf a wax calf. Um, and once I'd finished using this uh, this uh, Renomat on it and, and I um, applied polishes and creams, which I, you know, or at least creams to it, to the shoe, um, it really sort of gave me nasty white streaks and residue in the in where the creasing was. So it really didn't do the shoe any good. And then I had to take it off again and I, I really used some, some grease on it to, to get there was those, those white cracks out of the leather. I mean, I say cracks, it, it's not really cracks, but they are creases. So yeah, I mean, that's the thing that after now five years, it's starting to become, I mean, it's not a problem. It doesn't really make much of a difference to in the way the shoe wears, but just from a visual standpoint, whenever you look down, you want it to, you know, look nice. And if a shoe does crease quite a lot, to me, it's um, it's not, you know, aesthetically not as pleasing <laughs> as if it doesn't. So if you're thinking of getting these or if you have this, this these shoes, um, just keep that in mind. Try not to get it too wet. Uh, and I probably wouldn't advise you using the Reno mat um, and try to get something that's that's. Uh, that, you know that has I'd say more different oils or, or fats in it than than this this the Renovator. Um, I know Safia does have a specific product for wax calf which I haven't used. Um, so if you have that product, I'd love to uh, to hear from you and see if you would recommend it. Um, but yeah, other than that, a very uh, lovely shoe that I can recommend to anybody who's thinking of buying it. Very versatile, very comfortable, and definitely go for it. Well, thanks a lot for listening. Give us a thumbs up. And once again, if you're feeling generous, give us a cheeky follow. See you soon.